What's up Glitter Jewels? Welcome to my channel where we find a way to sparkle and shine. Today's topic is how to find a great school for your child. And since I'm a mom and a school teacher, I'm going to give you some tips to do just that. The fact is, during the school year, your children will spend more time at school than anywhere else. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Tip number one, know your options. I want you to take some time to think about the following questions. Question number one, can you rely on the public schools in your area? Question number two, are there any charter schools or magnet schools that your child can either apply or audition for? And lastly, are there any private schools that are local and affordable in your area? Once you've answered those questions, they will help you get a jump start on a list that you can put down your first, second, and third choice for your child. The more options, the better. Besides, if you choose your choice number one and things don't quite work out, you could always pivot to a second or third choice. Uh, let me give you an example of what can happen if you don't explore your options. It was the middle of the pandemic, right when the numbers and cases started to simmer down. Most schools started to open back up but my son's private school decided not to reopen for in-person instruction. Now you know doggone well. I was highly upset. It was only then that I realized there were no other private, affordable local schools in the area. The charter schools had maxed out their lottery. And since we were living in the inner city, the public schools weren't quite up to par. So I was stuck. I had no options. So remember, please check your options and get them lined up so you can always have a choice. It's always good to have a plan A, a plan B, and a plan C. Tip number two know what you're looking for. Based on what you know about your child, I want you to ask yourself the following questions. Am I looking for a school that scores high on academic or standardized test? Am I looking for a school that has a direct focus or concentration like the arts, science, technology, or even athletics? Or Am I looking for a school that has diversity where all students perform well? Either way, knowing these things are quite important. And believe it or not, most parents want several of the things that I just mentioned, which is why at the end of this video, I'm going to show you how to use the internet to do your research so you can find out information about test scores, reviews, more deep student data, and diversity info. But for now, let's go ahead and get into tip number three. Tip number three, talk to your neighbors and people in your community. Now, I'm not trying to tell you to gossip, but the playground, the soccer field, the dance school lobby or parking lot is a perfect place to meet other parents. And most parents, when you meet them and begin to talk, most of them won't mind spilling the full tea on exactly how they feel about the local schools. So go ahead and start talking. But again, try to stay away from gossip and try to not get too wrapped up in the negative things that parents may or may not say. Instead, zoom in on the vibe or the overall gist you get from what they're telling you about the local schools. 
as a matter of fact. I even put together a list of questions per grade level to kind of give you a better idea of how to get the real scoop. For pre-K and elementary, you may ask something like, is it a hands-on environment or is my child gonna spend all day doing worksheets? Will the children get play, like structured and unstructured time to play? For middle school, you may ask things like, what is the school's philosophy on homework? Are they gonna be sitting at the table doing hours and hours, like three, four, five hours of homework? And how does the school handle bullying and peer pressure in the middle school? For high school, are there opportunities for basic skills or advanced placement courses? And how does the school prepare our children for the outside world beyond high school? And there's even a question you can ask for any grade level. How are the administrators? If I have a concern or a question, are they responsive? Will they take forever to get back to me? Or will I get a response right away? Tip number four, visit the school. Now some schools won't offer this option, but if they do, take them up on the offer. But it's key to visit the school while it's in session. Sure, you can visit in the summer when the building is squeaky clean and kid free, but this won't be quite as effective. Besides, there are three major things that you're looking for when you're touring a school. As a matter of fact, I wrote them down. While walking around in the building, are the teachers working with students or are most of them sitting off to the side at their desk? Oh, when you saw the children walking in line with their class, were they walking as if they were in school quietly and respectfully? Or were they coming down the hallway like a local marching band? When you passed the boys and girls bathroom, was it loud, like children were playing in the bathroom or smelly? If it was, then that's telltale sign of something not so good. These three questions help you to learn three major things about the school. Number one, what is the work and learning environment like? And number two, what are the behavioral expectations of the school? And number three, the bathrooms and how they smell just by walking by lets you know the sanitation and cleanliness of the school. Tip number five, do your research. I recommend going to greatschools.com. You simply go to the website, type in the name of your school district, and you can literally see just about everything. First, check the test scores. How is a school faring against other schools in the area or in that state? On a scale, of zero to 10. Five is average. Anything above five is above average. Anything below five is below average. You can also click on the diversity information. On this screen, you can see how each race does academically as well. Here's an example of something that looks good in terms of diversity and their academic learning and growth. You see how most of the students are scoring high above a five, no matter what race or origin they belong to. Here's an example of a not so good situation for children of color. You see how most of the students of color or all the students of color are scoring below the average mark. You should probably pick another school. However, you can't always judge schools on test scores. So please remember there's other factors to consider as well. Then on greatschools.com, there's also a review section. In the review section, there's not just reviews from parents, teachers, but there's also reviews from students too. Well, 
my time is up super moms but before i go a big shout out to all of my subscribers both old and new glitter jewels till next time bye